The money supply is the total amount of money in circulation in an economy, and inflation is a general increase in price level. So what is the link between the money supply and inflation? Well, Milton Friedman said inflation is caused by too much money chasing too few goods. So what did he mean by that? Well, if the amount of money in circulation increases faster than the amount of output, then firms will respond by putting up prices. Let us have a look at a few examples. First of all, in 1999, if we have 1 million widgets and a money supply of 10 million pounds, then the average price will be 10 pounds per widget. Now, if the next year there's the same number of widgets and the same money supply, the prices will stay the same and the inflation rate will remain at zero. Now, what about next year, 2001, when the money supply increases to 20 million? So there's twice as much money in the economy and everyone might feel they're better off because they have more cash. Whereas your salary used to be £100 a week, it's now £200 a week. But the problem is, the amount of output is exactly the same. There's still only 1 million widgets. So in this case, what will happen? Well, if there's twice as much money, but the same amount of goods, there'll be more demand to buy those goods. So firms will respond by putting up a price and the prices will rise to £20. And this will give us an inflation rate of 100%. Now, if we look at this example, in 2001, we get an increase in the money supply from 10 million to 20 million. But at the same time, the output of the economy doubles. The number of widgets goes from 1 million to 2 million. So here, people have more cash, more money, but at the same time, output has increased. So although we want to buy more goods, there are more goods that are able to be bought. So here, the prices stay the same and the inflation rate also remains at 0%. In this example, we get a, a constant output from 1999 to 2003 and the money supply steadily doubles. And this gives us an inflation rate of 100%. In this example, between 2003 and 2004, the number of widgets increases 25% and in the same year, the money supply increases 25%. So prices stay the same and the inflation rate is at 0%. So this explains the theoretical link between the money supply and inflation. And Caterus Paribus, increasing the money supply does cause inflationary pressures. So this is why, unfortunately, we can't simply print more money. Because if you print more money, it doesn't change the real output, the real income, the actual amount of goods and services that can usefully be enjoyed by consumers. If you print more money, it just means that prices go up. However, in the real world, this link between the money supply and inflation isn't always so straightforward. And it is possible in some circumstances to increase the money supply without causing inflation. And a good example of this is after the great financial crash, crash of 2009. The economy went into a deep recession. Output was low, banks uh, didn't want to lend money and inflationary pressures fell very significantly. Central banks cut interest rates, but because we were in a liquidity trap, these low interest rates were not sufficient to boost investment. So central banks took another step. They started to create more money. They created money electronically through quantitative easing. It's effectively the same thing as printing more money, except they didn't print more notes. They just uh, created it in the central bank ledger. This graph shows two things. It shows the US monetary base and US inflation. The US monetary base is a measure of the money supply called M0. It's basically notes and coins in general circulation and bank deposits in the central bank's reserves. So we can see that in 2008-2009, the Federal Reserve had a very significant increase in the money supply. They created money electronically as part of quantitative easing. And you see that the money supply almost doubled, increased by over 100% in 2009. But look at what happened to inflation at that time. Inflation actually fell, and in fact it went into negative territory, which is deflation. So in 2009, 
this big increase in the money supply had no effect on causing inflation. Why was this? Well, a few reasons. Firstly, we were in a recession, so people didn't want to spend. Secondly, the main thing is that the money supply went to commercial banks, but they didn't want to lend this extra money to firms and households because they were short of money themselves. So they basically, they just increased their bank reserves, they increased their reserve ratio. So although there was an increase in M0, the monetary base, it didn't lead to higher spending and higher inflation. Now, if we skip a couple of decades to 2020, again, we see the Federal Reserve increase the monetary base in 2020 during the COVID pandemic. In the COVID pandemic, there was a big fall in output and rising unemployment. So in response, the Federal Reserve again increased the money supply by creating money electronically. Not quite as much as in 2008-09, but still about 50% increase. Now, the interesting thing is that by 2021 and 2022, US inflation has started to increase. So this suggests that the increase in the money supply in 2020 may well have had an effect on pushing up inflation. And in fact, many economists do agree that the Federal Reserve maybe got it wrong because the US economy grew very quickly and started to overheat, causing some inflationary pressures. I should point out though that the inflation of 2022 wasn't just due to the increased money supply, it was also due to global factors such as rising oil and gas prices, and also COVID-related supply side issues, which caused cost push inflation. Another factor about quantitative easing is that you could argue it caused a different type of inflation, and that is one of rising asset prices. Because with the increase in quantitative easing and the increased money supply, then banks often bought shares and bonds, which increased the price of these. And so we saw a rise in asset prices like shares, government bonds, and house prices. So although consumer price index remained very low, uh, we did see a lot of money entering the stock market and uh, asset prices, and also flowing overseas as well. Also, another interesting uh, scenario is that typically, if you print more money, output remains the same. However, there may be some circumstances where printing money can actually stimulate investment and demand. Supposing that we're in a recession and firms don't want to invest, households don't want to spend because confidence is very low. And these deflationary pressures increase real debt. And this is a drag on investment and consumer spending. So because of deflationary pressures and very low growth and high unemployment, the central bank increases the money supply. It gives money directly to households so that they will go and spend. And what happens is that if households start spending more, then firms think, great, we could, it's now worthwhile to start investing again and increasing output. So in the middle of a recession, increasing the money supply can ironically increase uh, output. But it's worth mentioning that this is only going to be a short-term solution. It's only when there is the economy is well below full capacity, when there's also spare capacity. Printing money will not increase the uh, long-run aggregate supply and the long-run trend rate of economic growth. It's only really applicable uh, in a deep recession. And even that is something that economists may disagree on. Uh, Keynesians may argue that in a recession, we need some kind of economic stimulus, either fiscal policy or monetary policy, whereas um, monetarists and supply side economists are much more skeptical about the capacity for an increase in the money supply to have any effect on real output. So unfortunately, we generally can't print money. And when your parents told you money doesn't grow on trees, it was a good reason. If you want to increase real output and real living standards, we have to do it by investing, increasing productive capacity and increasing the amount of goods that we have. And if we just print money, just increase the money supply, then we can get quite bad inflation. And it's worth mentioning just a few examples where printing money did cause hyperinflation. So for example, in the Confederacy in the US Civil War between 1861 and 1865, the Confederacy were uh, short of output, but they started to increase the money supply, printed money, and this caused runaway inflation in the South. 
One of the most famous examples of hyperinflation is Germany in 1922 to 23. Uh, struggling to pay reparations to the Allies, Germany started to uh, print money to pay workers. And this caused uh, inflation to increase, and this caused another incentive to increase the money supply again. And so the inflation got out of hand. Prices skyrocketed, and the Deutsche Mark uh, fell very dramatically. In more recent examples, we can see Zimbabwe in around 2008, output was falling, and the government responded by printing more money. But this just caused uh, hyperinflation, and goods and services soon became uh, worthless. So it's quite an interesting topic, the link between the money supply and inflation. And it's one that not all economists agree on, because there's quite a lot of nuances and the effect depends on certain circumstances. But from a general framework, increasing the money supply will cause inflation if the increase in the money supply is faster than real output. But there are times when this link is broken. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Bye.